Sometimes you just want to break down one object that contains multiple fields to initialize several separate variables. To achieve this, you can use Kotlin's destructuring declarations. In this video, I'll tell you more about how to use this feature, what Kotlin types offer it by default, how to implement it in your own classes or for classes that you don't control but you think would benefit from destructuring, and how everything works under the hood. If you learn something new, like the video and subscribe to the channel, but only if you think we've earned it. Destructuring declarations allow us to define local values and variables as such. It's a convenient way to work with data coming from functions or iterating over collections. By default, all data classes support destructuring. You can decide to only use a subset of uh, variables from your class's fields. Destructuring doesn't allow you to pick exactly which fields you want to use. It will always use the first x fields, where x is the number of variables you declare. The downside of this is that it's easy to make mistakes. For example, the following snippet might provide an unexpected result. The rating value will actually hold the value of good doggo breed. You will get a warning saying variable name rating matches the name of a different component and a suggestion to rename the rating to breed. As this is only in the IDE and not a compiled warning, well, it might be easy to miss. If you only need a subset of non-consecutive fields, use underscore for those you're not interested in. Kotlin will just skip them. OK, let's take a look at the decompiled uh, data class to see what's going on. In this video, we'll only focus on the functions generated for the structuring. For more information on data classes in general, stay tuned for a future video. So to see the Java decompile code, go to Tools, Kotlin, show Kotlin bytecode, then press the decompile button. OK, we see functions called component1, component2, component3, so component n. These are generated for every property declared in the primary constructor, where n is the index of the field in the primary constructor. And, and that's all. That's the magic, constructor and functions. So, how do you implement your own magic? If you want to add the structuring functionality to a class that doesn't support it, then just implement the corresponding component and operator function. Make sure you prefix them with the operator keyword. Kotlin allows you to implement the structuring for classes you don't own via extension functions. So for example, map.entry from Kotlin standard library is just an interface. And by default, it does not support the structuring. To overcome this, component1 and component2 functions were created that return the key and value of map entry. Use destructuring whenever you need to unpack the fields of an object to values or variables. Under the hood, destructuring is implemented by providing component and operator functions, so you can provide those yourself for classes that you think would benefit from this functionality. Are you already using destructuring? Leave a comment below and tell us more about it. Thanks for watching and go write better Android apps with Kotlin.